Now, my boy, that's something to remember. Someday you'll be able to tell your grandchildren that you saw a city go completely crazy. Yeah, but the darned old war would end just today. Well, what are you kicking for? You want to go back and be wounded a second time? No, I've had enough of that. But who the devil's going to buy a book on a day like this? <laughs> well, I don't think it'll affect your sales any. I shouldn't worry about it if I were you. Easy enough for you to talk. You publish two or three novels a week. But this is my thirst. <laughs> yes, I understand. Looks great, doesn't it? Uh-huh. Mr. Marshall, do you think there's really now, a chance... Now, my boy, I've told you before that you'll be very lucky with the first novel to sell 2,000 copies. This is not going to be a bestseller. Someday I think you may write one. Probably four or five novels from now. That's the chance I'm taking on you. I'm not going to make any money on this one. On your second book, I may break even. On your third, I may make a little money. <laughs> Go on, get out of here. Go home and write. I'm going out to celebrate. Well, maybe that's a good idea. And don't keep phoning up every day to find out how your sales are going. Three months from today, you'll get a royalty statement. Thanks. Bye-bye. Goodbye. you like it? Well, I haven't even opened it yet. I only bought it two minutes ago. Why? I'm the guy that wrote it. I'm Freddie Williston. <laughs> That's a new one. Honest I am. No kidding. Yes, and I'm the Queen of Belgium. No, I can prove it to you. Look, wait a minute. Here, look. See? And I'll show you my... Oh, don't worry. I believe you. So then what? Well, <laughs> you're my public. You're what? My public. You're probably the only person, certainly the first person who's bought my book because it was only published today. You're my first reader. And do you plan to give them all a reception like this? Well, if they're all as attractive as you are, I do. <laughs> hey, look at the beautiful girl. Come on. Hey, wait. How's it going? How's what going? The book. Book? What book? The book. I wrote this. Oh, I think I sold one. Oh, say, you don't happen to remember the name of the person you sold it to, do you? Say, are you kidding me? No, only I thought that maybe you could... Oh, I'm busy. Is it time to get it in tomorrow morning's paper? Sure, until 6 p.m. And the charming prince came and killed the terrible old dragon and rescued the beautiful princess from the dark dungeon. And then they were married and they lived happily ever after. Oh, is that all? That's all. Will you play house with me? In a minute, darling.
Chelsea 6513. Hello. Hello, Mr. Willison, please. Just a minute. Mr. Willison, for you. Me? For you. Hello? My public. Gee, I'm glad. So you saw my ad. Of course I read it. I mean the book. And I loved it. Honest? You ain't kidding me. Did you like the part where the boy says... I read every page of it. You're very clever, and I think you must be very nice to write like that. Gee, I gotta see you. I don't even know your name or anything. How about lunch? Oh, no, I can't. Oh, well, how about dinner, then? Oh, come on. You gotta give a novelist a break. All right. No, I can't meet you here. I'll meet you outside someplace. That'll be fine. At a girl. Don't be late now, will you? Okay. Goodbye. Wait till I found her. Oh, you would beat her. No, my public. Come in. Good evening, Mr. Williston. Good evening, Swenson. If you've come to see about your rent, I, I'm afraid you're out of luck. Mr. Williston, I hate to bother you, but uh, you are two months behind right now. I'm, and I'm getting a little baby coming any minute, and uh, I figured if you could uh, let me have... Uh... There, Swenson, is a signed first edition. Someday that'll be worth a lot of money to you. Oh, <laughs> oh, these writers. Now, don't worry. You'll get paid all right. Uh, well, Mr. Willison, couldn't you let me have maybe just uh, a friend of Starless? You see, the baby's coming any minute. And if I don't bring something home to Mama, she'll raise. Uh, yes, I know. <laughs> you know, <laughs> just a friend of Starless, Mr. Willison. All right. Thank you, thank you, Mr. Willison. I'll just have a small portion of chicken salad. You sure that's all you want? I have a very small appetite. Two chicken salads. Two chicken salads. I'm glad you read the newspapers. I don't know what I would have done if I hadn't seen you again. It's rather romantic, isn't it? Introduced by the armistice, reunited through the press. <laughs> Why wouldn't you let me call for you at your house? I like to meet people downtown. Well, you will give me your address, won't you? I'd hate to think that I might lose you again. It's Fifth Avenue, 989. Fifth Avenue? You must be disgustingly rich. Don't you like rich people? Well, they're rich enough to buy my book. Well, that reminds me. Something I want you to explain. Where is she? She isn't anywhere. I haven't got a wife. I just put that in because someday I hope to have one. And I wanted to like it. She couldn't help it. I think it's beautiful. Say that again. 
You know, I like you. I'm afraid you're going to be my favorite novelist. My public. <laughs> May, hmm? my hands are asleep. <laughs> oh, so is mine. <laughs> oh, Excuse me, but uh, fun is fun, and we would like to close up. Uh, Three dollars even. Oh. Oh, I hate to go. Thank you. You know what? I'd like to put a bronze tablet up on the wall there saying something like, uh, in this booth, Frederick Williston got to know the loveliest person in this world. Oh. You're just like the boy in your book. And he's a darling. <laughs> Good evening. Good evening, sir. Uh, Miss Ballard in? Yes, Miss uh, May Ballard. Will you tell her that Mr. Williston is calling, please? Uh, very good, sir. Uh, will you wait here? Thank you. Good evening. I was just admiring some of your books. Indeed. Yes, I I'm very much interested in books myself. I'm an author. Who are you? Williston's my name. I was going on Miss Ballard. So my butler informed me. Well, I hope he told her. She's been sent for. Oh. You're uh, Mrs. Ballard, I suppose? Your supposition is inaccurate. I am Mrs. Henry Abbott. Oh. Well, Miss Ballard is staying here. She must be visiting you. Miss Ballard is governess to my grandchildren. Nursery governess. I do not permit my servants to entertain male visitors. I've sent for Miss Ballard and shall tell her so once more. Oh, now, wait a minute. She didn't know I was coming. In, in fact, she told me not to come. Have you sent for me, Mrs. Abbott? I did. It's all right, May. Don't look so distressed. Miss Ballard, you should make it quite clear to your friends that if they call for you at this house, they should do so at the servant's entrance. Hey, how dare you talk to her like that? Why, for two oh, pins? I... No, it's all right. Let me read her the riot act. Miss Ballard. Go pack your things. Now, wait a minute. Save your breath. There's no use your firing her because she's quitting right now. Why, I wouldn't let her stay here another minute. May, do you trust me? We'll go on upstairs and get your hat and coat. We're leaving. Where are we going? You leave that to me. All right. Make it snappy. Now, if you please, will you draw the check for the amount that you owe her? Just who are you, anyway? Me? I'm the guy she's going to marry. Why, I didn't know she was engaged. <laughs> You've got nothing on her, neither does she. Thanks. No hard feelings, I trust. I think you must be insane. Mm -mm, in love. Well, where do we go from here? Haven't you heard? We're going to be married. Oh, Freddie. Oh, darling, I'm sorry, but it did slip. Darling, as a dishwasher, you're a perfect failure. Let me do it. You go on back to work. All right. You're the boss. <laughs> darling. Yes? Come here. Darling, just what does a guy say about brassieres? Well, it depends upon what he feels about brassieres. 
Gosh, how I hate writing advertising copy. Oh, I know, darling, but it buys the groceries and pays the rent. And someday you'll be rich and famous and won't have to do anything but write novels. Have I mentioned very lately, Mrs. Williston, that as a wife you're just about 100% perfect? Tell me that in three years instead of three weeks. And it'll be a real testimonial. <laughs> <laughs> oh, say, did I tell you about the scene I've mapped out for the new novel? I've got an idea oh, for... Oh, Freddie. You're just dying to get started on it, aren't you? Well, it would be more fun than writing testimonials for silent plumbing. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing romantic about that. Freddie, I know what. I'm going to get a job. I'm going to teach music. There's money in it, really. Oh, let me please. Then you wouldn't have to work on all this stuff. You could just work on your book. But you really like to. Well, I'd love to. I love music, and I... Oh, I do so want to help. All right. I'll let you support me. Oh, now, darling, I know you're going to be a great novelist. And someday we'll be frightfully rich. It's only just now when we're getting started that I want to help. I'd scrub floors for you if I had to. You're a grand person. Best little wife I ever had. <laughs> now, you put a new ribbon in the typewriter. I'm going out to get a job. Right. inquire from her if she has a sister or a girlfriend that would like to support a promising young artist. <laughs> Get out of here, will you? I'm busy. See you later. Oh. Hello? Hello, Willison. This is Matthews. Busy? Sure, I'm busy. I'm in the middle of the ninth chapter of my new novel. Oh, never mind that. Now listen, Willison. I've just read the Crenzo account, and I need copy, and I need it darn quick. I'll jump on a streetcar and get right over here. Sorry, I'm not writing copy any longer. I'm a serious novelist in the middle of a new book. Never mind your book. If it's no better than your first one, you land a poorhouse. Now listen, Willis, and do me a favor. I need a copy and you need a dough. What's that? Say, since when are you getting so snooty? Who's keeping you? My wife. Didn't you know? American novel. I'm just working on the proof. I think it's going to be a fifth. Good. I'm a lucky fellow sitting home here in luxury while you go and work yourself to death teaching a lot of stupid brats to play the piano. Oh, dumbbell. I love it. Besides, they're not all stupid. I've got one pupil, a tough little boy of eight. He's adorable. By the way, which would you rather have, a boy or a girl? Mm, boy, I guess. Then you could smack his head if he didn't pay proper attention. Oh, but I didn't mean as a pupil. I mean as a firstborn. Hmm. What are we calling? Well, he might be a herd. Glad. Am I? Well, Freddy. I'm all right. Gee, a guy's got a right to cry in his own room, doesn't he?
Now let's see, uh, four final shirts, a pair of leggings, two khaki trousers, six handkerchiefs, four suits of woolen underwear. Say, Ricky, where are your woolies? I couldn't find them, Dad. Apple sauce, you mean you didn't want to find them? Oh, they each like uh, uh, uh. Go ask your mother where they are. You'd think I was going to the North Pole. <laughs> I think a book of these would be charming. Mother. Just a moment, darling. I'm talking to Mr. Blake. You mustn't interrupt. Sorry. I think these old folk songs are fascinating. Then you'll do it? Right away? Slave driver. <laughs> what do you want, darling? I can't find my worries, Mother. Why, they're in the cedar chest in the hall. You wouldn't know where they were. How's the packing coming? Dad's not so hot. We'll never be able to close that grip. <laughs> well, you run along now. Your train leaves in less than an hour. Okay. Isn't he grand? Wait till I tell you what he said. Yes, yesterday. yes, I know. But will you forget that you're a devoted mother for just a moment? We have a lot of work to do. Oh, all right. Hey, Ricky, what are you going to do with all this junk? How about this hardware here? I'm going to use that to trap things with. Well, how are we going to do it? Well, here they are. Oh, thanks. And I want to take this, too. Well, you read that. Sure I've read it, but I want to put on the dog. I'll bet I'm the only boy in camp with a real live novelist for a father. <laughs> all right, we'll get it in. <clears throat> Give me a hand now. That's the idea. Say, Dad, could I take your bag? It's much larger. No, I'm sorry, son. I'm using it myself. You know, we're going down to Westchester to settle a new house. Gee, I wish I could come with you. You'll be back in a couple of weeks. Now, both together. <laughs> I think it's that trap of yours. You'll have to leave it home. No, I might catch a skunk. Well, if you do, don't you bring it back. <laughs> Here, clumsy, let me do it. Ah. Do it, Blake? No, darling. I want to talk to you about that. Would you mind, Terry, if I didn't go down to Westchester with you? I do so want to finish. Well, I don't mind waiting a couple of days. Oh, it'll be a couple of weeks, Fred, and I'll be pounding away on the piano and getting on your nerves. You go down and I'll stay here, and by that time, Ricky will be back, and we'll both join you. Right-o. Anyway, I can be getting in some good work on my new book. That's where I'll push up the family. We had camp, get it, Westchester, and mother here. Oh, it takes more than a few miles to break up a family, Ricky. Doesn't it, Fred? <laughs> there, you see? Perfectly simple. Boy, are you smart. You better hand it to me, Ricky. I certainly picked out a good mother for you. <laughs> you betcha. I like her. <laughs> Hello, is this Simpson's Market? Now, this is Mr. Williston of New House up on Fletcher Drive. Could you send up a case of white rock right away, please? Oh, don't bother, Williston. We can use ordinary water. Sure? Of course. Okay. Uh, never mind it. Thanks. Now, I'll, I'll telephone again. Hey, Snap, and tell me the worst. Oh, terrible. It means something. Something? Uh, have you got any Angostura bitters? Oh, I'm sorry. You know, we're not really settled here yet. Oh, well, never mind. We got plenty of gin, anyhow. You <laughs> We put the gin in before the carpets were laid. <laughs> Gosh, Mr. Willison, did you write all these? Well, uh, not the whole case full. Just those with my name on them. <laughs> going to put me in a novel, Mr. Willison? Of course. I'm going to use uh, all my new names. Give me a cigarette and stop mooning at Fred. I haven't got a cigarette, and I'll moon at Fred just as long as I want to. Well, here we are. Cheerio. Fred, she says I mustn't moon at you. Tell her I may. On the contrary, she's quite right. No mooning. It's most disturbing. Oh, Mr. Willis, and I want to see the rest of the house. Oh, I'm afraid we better not. Bed's not made. Bed looks like the devil. You know, I haven't got a maid yet. 
How long are you going to be a bachelor? Oh, just till tomorrow. My youngster gets back from camp tonight. His mother will bring him down in the morning. Oh, girl, I have an idea. Let's help this poor man with his housework. We'll pretend he hasn't got a wife. That's what you've been pretending all along, isn't it, dear? Meow. It's true, isn't it? Uh-uh. I take back the meow. Dog. Female. Oh, come on, girls. Let's go up there anyway. Oh, no, you don't. Oh, no, yes. Oh, Mr. Willison, George, you're working with me. Sure, we want to see where those bestsellers are written. Now, I'll tell you what I will do, though. As soon as May gets down here and we get organized, we'll throw a big party and you can explore every nook and cranny. Personally, I think it's time we all went home and left this poor man alone. An excellent suggestion, Siddy, hospitably. All right, Bonnie, come on. We've been throwing out a better house than this. <laughs> Where's my racket? You mean, what's your racket? Aren't you going to finish your drink? <laughs> I should say not. It nearly finished me. Oh. Are you coming to the club tonight? Well, I'm afraid I can't tonight. Say. I've got some work to do. Well, say, are you a member? Not yet. Well, I must get your guest card. Oh, say, that would be swell. You know, for two weeks, they're marvelously settled. I should say they are. We've been in our place five years and it's still a dump. <laughs> Open like a husband. I think you like your place. Well, I'm glad you came. Nice having you. Well, thanks the Lord they've gone as long. Now, Valerie, do you think it was discreet of you to stay? Oh, Freddie, I'm so tired of being discreet. Please don't scold. Freddie, does your wife understand you? Perfectly. What a pity. I wish you were objectionable like my husband. Oh, Freddie. Don't be scared. There can't possibly be any harm in holding hands. <laughs> Famous last words. Where's your groom now? Well, don't look so relieved. I haven't gone yet. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, big pardon, sir. I brought Mrs. Parker's car around. Is she here? Fine, she's just ready. Oh, no, I'm not. Thank you, Al. Just leave the car. You can ride the horse home. Now, Valerie. Now, it's all settled, Freddie. That's all, Al. Thank, Thank you. you. Oh, by the way, ma'am, I f forgot to tell you, Mr. Parker phoned down from town to say he'd be delayed very late at the office. I see. Thanks. Sir, uh, are you fixed up with help yet? Well, no, as a matter of fact, we're not. Well, I know a young woman who lives over in Brooklyn by the name of Bertha. A very bright young girl, sir. Uh, she's looking for a job. I thought perhaps... Well, maybe... fine. You send her down tomorrow and see Mrs. Williston. She'll be here then. Uh, very good, sir. Oh, mind you, when I say bright, I don't mean to say she's altogether too bright, but then at the same time, she's not quite so dumb as those other girls in Brooklyn. She's more if you understand... Well, you ask her to come down tomorrow, will you? Oh, well. <laughs> don't you find him a bit talkative? Mm -hmm. All servants are. Glad you haven't got one. Just, um, what are you waiting for? Can't you guess? I haven't the remotest idea. Liar. I'm awfully hungry. Sorry, but there isn't a thing to eat in the house. Tell you what I'll do. I'll take you to a roadhouse and blow you to dinner. That's what I was waiting for. Run along home, change your clothes. Mm -mm, don't need to. You can dress right here. Huh? Mm-hmm. I've got a bag all packed in the car. That's why I had him bring it. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. It all planned, see? Why, darling, I have Northwest Mounted Police blood in me. I always get my man. Go and get my bag. <laughs> Nothing doing. You run on home and change. Nope. I'm going to stay and dress here. But I'm going to be good. Oh, Freddie, you don't mind, do you? Which? You're saying? Are you being good? Why, the man's actually human. He can philander when he likes. Now, seriously, Valerie. We've got to cut this out. I know. You've got a nice wife. You're happily married, and I'd better run along and mind my own business. I'm going to, see? 
Oh, I know you don't give a hang for me anyway. I'm terribly sorry you're unhappy. Oh. Run along and get my bag. And from now on, we'll be perfectly platonic. Right up. Find the bathroom in there. Okay, thanks. Oh, Freddie, Freddie, don't go. I want you to help me get my boots off. Oh. Would your wife approve of this picture? Why not? Suppose you heard about it. What would you tell her? The truth, I suppose. I never have lied to her. Yeah. No. May and I have been through a great deal together. We were married when we were kids. Had a kid of our own before we were able to afford it. We planned our way through some pretty tough times together. Guess that breeds confidence. Never any love affair in all that time. first and see what he's doing. This is my surprise and I want to stage it properly. Okay, but hurry. Not at home. There's no one there. But mother, there's lights. I know, Ricky dear. He's probably gone down to the village or something. Uh, we'll drive down there. I'll get some groceries in the house. Uh, you don't mind driving down, do you, Roger? Well, not at all. Come on, Ricky. How about letting me do the shopping? I could go for a juicy steak in a big way. All right, Ricky. Go ahead. What's wrong, May? Oh, nothing. Sure. I was just disappointed because Fred wasn't there. Wonder where he could have gone. Well, perhaps he's Maybe gone. Maybe he just went for a stroll. I think I'll go and telephone him. He might be back now. That's a good idea. Oh, Freddy! Hold me a little tighter. You think it'd be a good idea? <laughs> oh, Freddie. I know I promised to behave, but I can't help it. Oh, I do love you so.
It would. Hello? Hello, Freddy. Oh, hello, May. Uh, We're at the market. Ricky and I. Roger drove us down. Well, darling, that's perfectly splendid. We'll be along in a few moments. Just want to buy some groceries first. All right, bye-bye. my wife. Well, in that case, I guess I'd better go. Well, I'd like to ask you to stay, I know why. I, I might be a little difficult to explain. Besides, you're the man who never lies to his wife. Do get my things, Freddy. And by the way, Freddy, remember that a clever lie is better than a clumsy explanation. Sure you got everything? Yep. It's all right, Freddy. I haven't left the tree. Good night, Freddy. Let's not tell Father we were here before. He might think we were silly. All right, Mother. Hello, Hello there. Well, Ricky, you've grown a foot. What have you got in there? Groceries. Plenty of them. Hello, dear. Hello, Hello Roger. Thanks a lot. That's fine. Boy, this is slick. Where's my room? It's at the foot of the stairs, dear. You have a whole suite to yourself. Gosh, that's swell. I'm going to explore. All dressed up. Going out? Well, yes, I was thinking of it. No fun dining at home alone. No, of course not. I hope you're not annoyed at our arriving a day early. Oh, darling, I'm delighted. Uh, how's the uh, book coming? Well, not so well. I, I can't seem to get started. How'd you like it, Ricky? Boy, I'm nuts about it. What's up there, Dad? I'll show you over the whole place. Entertain Roger, will you, darling? My dear, I don't know what you saw when you first came in. But please take my advice. Face him. You want facts, not suspicions. Ricky mustn't know. I didn't want you to know either. Your loyalty is wonderful. Fred gave you this house for your anniversary, didn't he? Well, then you surely can't believe that he'd forget that. Oh, I don't know what to believe. Take my advice. Have it out with him. Well, I'll be leaving. Goodbye, May. Thanks, Roger. Bye-bye. Goodbye. Hello. Where's Roger? He's gone. He wants me to go down to Baltimore for him. To do a book of mountain folk songs. I'll be away about a month. Oh, May. Have a heart. The tie that binds. Does it, Fred? Is it beginning to bind? That's only fiction. Then it isn't fact. You're not beginning to get tired of me? You know that I'm not. What makes you so nervous, Fred? You make me nervous. May, what is the matter? Oh, I've just been wondering. Wondering what? I've been imagining that perhaps your family wasn't quite welcome tonight. 
maybe you had another engagement. Well, as a matter of fact, I did, but I canceled it. Oh. The minute you called up from the market. Quick work. I just called him up and told him that my own true love had arrived home unexpectedly. And that he was out of luck. Say no more about it, said he, and hung up. I see. Fred, I've decided to go to Baltimore tonight. I'll take Ricky with me. May, I thought we were going to talk this thing over. We have been talking it over. I've given you every chance. I don't understand. I think you do. May, darling, I... Oh, don't. Mother, what do we eat? I'm starved. Ricky. What's the matter, Mother? Ricky, we're going away tonight. May. What's the matter, Dad? What happened? Mother. Well, I gave you a handsome trimming, my lad. You're way off your game. I'll oh, say I am. I can't play, I can't work, I can't eat, and I can't sleep. But I still can drink. Oh, send the steward to me, will you, please? Heard from May yet? Not a word. She's been gone ten days. I'm sorry. Women are a mystery to me. Can't understand them. You think at least she'd give me some sort of an explanation? Surely I deserve that. And didn't she? Not a word. She just walked out on me. I've known you for many years, Fred. Do you mind if I ask a most indiscreet question? No, go ahead. Well, I've heard quite a little gossip around the club about you and Valerie Parker. I'll bet you have. Is your conscience quite clear in that direction? Absolutely. Then I'm sure everything will be all right. I hope so. Want to send me a message? I'm going to Baltimore tomorrow. I'll be seeing her. Don't you think it's her place to send a message to me? Good morning, Mr. Blake. Good morning. Hello, Freddy. Hello. Oh, for goodness sake, don't be so polite. Sit down. Where are you going to sit? Right there, with Freddy. And you're going to chaperone us. Oh, I'm sorry, but I've got to run in and change. Oh, don't run away, Freddy. Be sociable. No, I'm afraid I really have got to go. So long, Roger. So long, Freddy. Bye-bye. Fine fellow, Williston. They broke the mold when they made him. Oh, he's a grand person. Ever meet his wife? Mm-mm. But I nearly did. You'd have enjoyed it. <laughs> Would I? I was in the bathtub covered with soap and confusion. Mm, I blush when I think of it. Sounds most intriguing. Oh, it was awful. You see, a gang of us had gone up to Freddy's. I stayed and dressed for dinner. Of course, poor old Freddy didn't want me to. He's terribly virtuous. But I made him let me. Suddenly, his wife phoned from the village, so of course I evaporated. I see. Suppose she'd come in a few minutes earlier. Wouldn't that be in a pretty picture? How fortunate she didn't. Oh, it threw an awful scare into poor old Freddy. He won't even look at me anymore. Thinks I'm poison. <laughs> what do you want? <laughs> How would you like a good sock in the snoot? Oh, I say, come, that's not the way to talk to me. Didn't I get your nice job here? No, sir, you didn't. Oh? 
You know what I think? Yeah. I think he's crazy. Come on, crazy? Yeah. He just sits in that library, pounding on that dinger. He don't keep no regular hours. I've been here two weeks now, and he ain't hardly spoken to me. Never says boo. Oh, what would he say boo for? Oh, shut up. I think I'll quit. I'll get me another job in Brooklyn where there's a little going on. <laughs> well, if it's goings on you want, Bertha, <laughs> you can give me a buzz at any time. <laughs> hey, you keep that for your horses. They like it, maybe. Oh, all right, all right. Uh, they keep you busy here? No, there ain't enough work to do. He says he's got a wife and kid, but I ain't seen hiding her hair of them. Oh. Oh, by the way, it reminds me I've got a, got a letter here from Mrs. Parker for him. Yeah. Any answer? How should I know? Oh, all right, you wait. Here, come on, Bertha, just one, come on. I should say not. <sighs> what is it, what is it? Here's a note from Mrs. Parker. Is there any answer, sir? The groom's waiting. No, no answer. Yes, sir. And about your dinner, sir, it's been ready a good half hour. I don't want any dinner. Yes, sir. And about the weekend, sir, I was thinking maybe I'd buy a turkey if Miss Wilson's little boy is going to be here because, you see, uh, turkeys is real good right now, and I make a stuffing that's mighty what nice. What are you I... talking about? Well, I was planning on a turkey if Mrs. Wilson's little boy is going to be back. You see... Well, I don't know when they're coming. Do anything you want. I... Yes, sir. And would you mind, sir, if I go out for a walk with my fiancé? Your what? My fiancé. You see, this here Al, uh, what brought the message, he, him and me, we just sort of walk out together and... and uh, yeah, well, walk out and jump in the lake, will you? Only leave me alone. Oh, yes, sir. I'm going to buy that turkey here anyway. Aren't you going to eat your dessert, dear? No, I'm not hungry, Mother. Why don't we eat downstairs tonight? Well, I thought we'd like it better up here in our room. Not so hotelly. Don't you, dear? I guess so. Mother, when are we going to go home? Pretty soon, Ricky. I'm not through with my job yet. Mother, we are going home to Dad, aren't we? Why, yes, Ricky, of course. Want to go to the movies tonight? With you? No, Mr. Blake's coming up to see me. We'll be busy. But there's a good show at the Orpheum. Don't you want to go? I think I'll finish my letter to Dad. All right, dear, do that. Gee, I hope it's Dad. Hello? Yes? Just a minute. Mother, it's Mr. Blake. He's in the lobby. Well, tell him to send him right up. All right. Tell him to come up. All right. Mother, when shall I tell Dad we'll be home? I don't know yet, dear. Come in. Hello, Roger. Hello, May. Hello, Ricky. Hello, Mr. Blake. Well, I hope I'm not too early. Oh, no, we've just finished. Have the way to take these away, will you? Yes, ma'am. Well, young fellow, how do you like Baltimore? Oh, it's not so hot. I think I like it better than Westchester. <laughs> Come on, I'll show you what I've done. <laughs> I thought we'd use these three for the first cycle. Uh, just a minute, dear. Uh... Oh, uh, Ricky, dear. Yes, Mother? Run down to the lobby and get Mr. Blake a couple of cigars. Okay. What can you want, Mr. Blake? Well, now, I'll, I'll leave that to you. Something mild. Uh, two for a quarter. Okay, Ricky, don't always say okay. Okay. I forgot. <laughs> I mean kale. <laughs> I've got some good news for you. Yes? You're going to like me. Oh, tell me. <laughs> Thank you.
Hello? Oh, it's you, Valerie. Well, I think the least you could have done was answer my note. Oh, but that's absurd, darling. Oh, Freddie, don't be ridiculous, really. Well, I think that's her lookout, don't you? Well, maybe you're right, but we're not going to see each other. No, no, I don't want you to do that. Oh, you poor darling, you are grouchy, aren't you? I'm going to make it my business to come over there and cheer you up. Oh, wait a minute, darling. Oh, Freddie, dear. Running after Williston again. I didn't hear you knock. I didn't. Here, lay off of Williston. I won't have my wife... You're to... hurting me. Thought you'd gone to town an hour ago. Sure you did. That's why you... You had a call from your fancy woman. I recognized her voice. You mustn't keep her waiting. You haven't anything on me. No, because I haven't the money to hire a detective. Well, I have the money. So watch your step. And Valerie Parker told me the whole story. And I know she wasn't lying. You were right, Roger. Suspicion is a horrible, deadly thing. I should have told Fred, and then he could have explained. I only hope he'll be big enough to understand and forgive me. That's just what he's waiting to do. I don't know how to thank you, Roger. You're the best friend Fred and I ever had. Come here. Oh, Freddie, you're unreasonable. You won't answer my notes. You hang up on me when I phone. How else am I to see you? Well, uh, aren't you going to ask me to come in? Because it's her house. She left it, didn't she? She walked out on you without saying a word, didn't she? And you haven't done anything wrong. She hasn't answered your letters or anything, has she? No, she hasn't. Freddie, please ask me to come in. I won't take a bath, I promise. That last bath you took got me in plenty of hot water. Oh, I'm sorry. Well, just for two minutes. And don't make yourself too comfortable. I'm going to give you one drink and then I'm going to throw you out of here. All right, darling, make it a strong one. Freddie, I'll bet you've been moping here all day. Oh, you are a fool. I'll tell you what, Freddie. Turn on the radio and dance with me. Mm -hmm. Why not? Dancing is bad for my blood pressure. Well, let's go uptown and dance. We haven't done anything we need be ashamed of. Oh, Freddie. Come on. Let's be gay. Just for one night. All right. Why not? Ricky. Yes? We're going home tomorrow. Honest? Did you call Dad? No. Do you want to telephone him? Okay. Operator. Operator. Long distance, please. Westchester 1312. Freddie. Have you noticed how gorgeous the moon is tonight? No. Oh, what a pity. You see, that's what 13 years of marriage does to a man. Mm. No. Yes, dear. Back home where I belong. Oh, Fred. I don't know what to say except that everything's all right again. Oh, May. Why didn't you write to me? Why didn't you telephone? Oh, why did you wait so long? I wanted to be sure, Fred. And now I am sure. <laughs> Hello, Dad. I guess you're surprised to see us. We drove like anything to get down here in time for breakfast. 
And Mr. Blake let me drive for a while. Wasn't that keen? He tried to do 60. He was in such a hurry. Uh, fortunately, the Lord was watching us. We were spared. Meet Beatrice Fairfax. He's the one who told me all about your Lady of the Bath. He's been scolding me all the way down, and I deserved it. <laughs> Suppose we leave them alone for a minute. Finish breakfast. Okay. I get it. <laughs> we tried to phone you several times last night, dear, but you were out. Yes, I... I had to go up to town to see Marshall about the moving picture rights of the tie that binds. It... It got so late that I... I stayed overnight. Uh-huh. You go into breakfast here. I'll answer it. All right. Valerie. Fred. Fred, we're in a jam. Oh, a most horrible jam. We were followed last night. I must see you. But I can't. Me and Ricky are home. Say, Mother, when Dad sells a couple more of his books, I'm going to ask him to get me a racing car. <laughs> Bert's just behind me. We have the most dreadful scene, Fred. You wait here for me, Daly. Okay, Parker. Ricky, will you take Mr. Blake into the library a moment, dear? Sure. Well, you thought you'd beat me over, eh? Oh, Bert, please don't make a scene. His wife got back today. Well, that suits me fine. Now, look here, Parker. Mr. Fred. May, I'm terribly sorry, but I'm afraid... Won't you come in? Mrs. Williston, this is an unpleasant task. But it's my duty and must be done. Well, supposing you come in, Mr. Parker. Please, Mrs. Williston, don't believe a word of it. It isn't true. I'm prepared to prove anything I say. Your husband and my wife... Mr. Will... Parker. My son is in there. Will you kindly lower your voice? Well, perhaps it's time that the boy learn what sort of a heel his father is. Well, whatever it is that you're going to try to tell me, couldn't we discuss it quietly like gentle people? What is it you want of me? I'm going to get a divorce and name him correspondent. Perhaps we can work together on this. Oh, if you must be vulgar, talk to me about it. I'm used to it. Keep out of this or you'll get a... I know, a slap in the mouth. But I must say, in all fairness to Bertie, he never strikes me unless he's real cross. I'm prepared to prove that your husband and my wife were together last night. You must be mistaken. Suppose I tell you that they were followed to the Hotel Reynolds, where they registered. I don't believe it. I don't believe it. All right, then. Perhaps you'll believe the detective who followed them. Oh, Bert, please don't. Come here, Daly. Oh, Bert, please, leave him out of it. Do anything you want to to me. It wasn't his fault. He'll get all that's coming to him. I don't know what to say, May. But it's true. Oh, Fred. I just couldn't bring myself to tell you. Well, was it true the other time when she was here? No. No, she's never meant anything to me, either then or now. But you'd left me and hadn't given me a chance to explain, and I felt abused. Then she came here, and we had a couple of drinks. We got to feeling sorry for ourselves and for each other. Then we drove up... Oh, that's enough. There'll be a nasty, dirty scandal, won't there? I'm afraid so. Poor Ricky. What's happening in there, Mr. Blake? Don't worry, Ricky. Everything will be all right. Mrs. Williston, this is Daly, a detective. He has proof of what I said. Go ahead, Daly. I follow this gentleman here and that lady along the post road to New York City from here. They arrived at Tony's on West 46th Street at 11.15 p.m. last night. They had numerous drinks. They left at 2.45 a.m. in their car and drove to Hotel Reynolds. Are you quite sure it was my husband? Yes, ma'am. He was wearing the same clothes he has on now, with a light gray hat. Mr. Daly, you're paid to get testimony, aren't you? Sure, I get paid for my work as well as anyone else. Then if Mr. Parker insisted upon evidence, you'd of course be quite willing to... uh... I wouldn't be willing to perjure myself, ma'am. Well, you're either committing perjury or else your eyesight is very poor because my husband was with me last night. Your husband was with you? With you? What's this? I understood that you were out of town last night. 
I came home. You came home here? No, we stayed in the city. Oh, yeah? What hotel? We stayed at a friend's apartment. I suppose you can give me the name of this friend? Yes. He's here now. I'll call him. Roger, will you come in here a moment, please? Yes. I hate to drag you into a vulgar thing like this, Roger, but you can save us from a rather nasty scandal if you can convince Mr. Parker's detective that we were with you last night. Why don't you write him a letter about it? Uh, what does your detective claim he has detected, Mr. Parker? He followed my wife and her husband to the Hotel Reynolds last night. You must be mistaken. Mr. and Mrs. Williston were my guests last night. Well, that comes to court. Will you swear to it? Of course. They lie, Mr. Parker. I've done my job and I know what I saw. Wait a minute, Daly. No, they've dumped the apple cart on us. I'll wait the outside. You're lying, both of you. I don't know what the big idea is, lying to save this chiseling husband of yours when you know he's as guilty as I do. But you're lying, both of you. That's your story. I suppose you'll stick to it. It didn't quite gel, did it, Bertie? I'll get rid of you yet. I think you're very wonderful, Mrs. Williston. Do you? We don't deserve all... You this. deserve and have my contempt. Both of you. I was only thinking of Ricky. I'm dreadfully sorry, Freddie. For everything. I only wanted to... Don't you think you'd better go? What are you going to tell Ricky? Nothing. I won't have him hurt. I want him to believe in you. Get him in here now before I start to cry, will you? coming down. I guess they'll be right down. Say, are you and your mom going to stay here? Why, well, sure we're going to stay. This is our home. Mm. We we're only away for a trip. Oh, I see. I just thought maybe I just wanted to know. Morning, Mother. Good morning, Ricky. Sleep well last night, Mother? Mm-hmm. I've been up and around. This place sure is slick. It doesn't seem like new either. Seems like we've lived here for years. You know what I'm going to do when I'm growing up? I'm going to have a place something like this. I'm going to have a wife, two or three, or maybe four kids. And we'll visit each other. One week, you and Dad will come to our place. And the next, my wife, my family, and I will come here. Say, Mother, you know that Bertha? She's a sketch. You know what she asked me? She wanted to know if we were going to stay here. Guess she thought we were here on a visit. Hi, Dad. Breakfast. Morning, Ricky. Say, let's hurry, shall we? Then we can go for a hike, huh? You know, I learned how to fish up at camp. And, oh, boy, can I cast a fly. What do you say if we go to a lake or someplace where there's trout next summer? Shall we? It's hard to tell where we'll all be next summer. Oh, we'll all be here, won't we? Home. Oh, let's maybe not take a vacation. Let's just stay home. I think I'll like that best. Don't allow yourself to grow too attached to home. Why not? 
It's just good sense not to, that's all. I don't know what you mean. Perhaps your mother means that it isn't wise to love anything so much that losing it almost kills you. We'll all be here, won't we? I was only giving general advice, Ricky. Gosh, you sound like we're all going to be dead. You both act so funny. Ever since yesterday. Gosh, it's awful. I'm not a baby anymore. I know something's happened. Ricky, come here. Oh, no, Fred. I've got to tell him. I can't stand this any longer. I'm going to tell him. Ricky, I've been unfaithful to your mother. Do you know what that means? Mm -hmm. Another woman? Yes. Are you and mother going to separate? I don't know. That's up to her. But I've behaved rottenly. Rottenly. You mean we're not going to be a family anymore? What is it, Ricky? I don't know. I feel sort of sick. Oh, Ricky, darling. Leave me alone. I'll be all right. Oh, Ricky, don't look like that. Ricky. I don't expect you to understand it. But I do want you to believe that I've never stopped loving your mother. You and she will always be the dearest things in the world to me. No matter what happens. Help me decide. Help me decide. Whatever you say. Do you... Do you still feel the same towards your father? Yes, Mother. You do love him terribly, don't you? Yes. He may have done something bad, but he seems the same to me. I guess nobody's perfect. Oh, Ricky. Oh, I'm all right, Mother. Anything you say will be all right. Don't you worry. I'm not going to leave him. Honest. Honest. Not just for me. You want to stay, don't you? Of course I do. Ricky, have you got a handkerchief? Gee, I haven't got one. But we'll borrow one from Dad and tell him. Dad. You know what I think? What, Ricky? I think we're a pretty nice family. That's what I think.